What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus. On your first deposit, bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or... Check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. back at it episode seven the grant leonard show you see him in the picture there with his shot black and center malcolm wilson off the bench doing big things defensively for the queen's royals g three and one so we last talked man uh are you happy with that with that recovery of the team man as you get ready for his nashville road trip coming up here this week yeah i mean we had a really good uh you know th- three three of the last four and all of them were at the levine center and uh then we lost one tight one at, at north alabama but Guys are making a lot of progress, really starting to to figure out, you know, guys' roles and and how we play and margins and stuff like that. Been really proud of the progress. And uh this guy's this guy's one of them, you know, more and more experience on the floor and his impact's been huge. You start to see him block, you know, every, every game multiple shots at five uh on Thursday night. Is that right? Five. Yeah, man. Tie your career high, Malcolm. Five blocks, man, against Central Arkansas, man, and also to any Hoyas as well. Well, tell me about, man, being tall as you are, man, packing the game, but on the floor, man, affecting how teams want to go drive to the hole knowing you're there waiting on them. Yeah, it feels good to have, you know, that kind of impact on the game and, you know, know that you're in the other player's mind mentally and how they play and affecting the way that, you know, they score. Um and so any way I can make an impact on the game and, you know, find time to help my team out, that's what I'm trying to do. It's probably and my I'm favorite out. part of the EKU win was uh, the nation's leading shot blocker for EKU, ducking and hiding where, where and where Malcolm was. And that was awesome to see. He he was nervous and because and, he got a shot blocked a few times. And there was one time he caught it, could have dunked it, kind of hesitated. Then he put it up. Malcolm got it again. And, and see that kind of hesitation. We haven't had that in a long time. And Malcolm, as you watch film of your opponents, man, um, how do you kind of position yourself to go block their shots or affect their shots or become a statue and make them shoot over you because of your length and your height, man? So as you watch film of your opponents, how do you kind of set yourself up to be able to block those shots and affect their shots and get in their heads the way G just described as EKU? 
Yeah, it's it's really just a feeling. Coach talks a lot about staying in between, you know, your man and the rim. And so, you know, positioning is the first part, but the rest is just feeling on when they're going to release the ball and go after it. No doubt, man. And for you, uh, and for you, how you gonna get that feel? You know, I, I'm not, I'm I'm five eleven. I wasn't one of the tall guy. You're a tall guy, so a foot tall. So how do you kind of get a feel for a guy when he's gonna go up and but get that right time in the block it, start getting in that wrist so they don't call a foul on you as well. Right. Knowing film is a part of it. So knowing if you have a player that's gonna shot fake a lot or spin, um, if they're going up quick, just knowing what their moves are and being ready for those moves, that definitely helps out a lot. Um, but, I mean, I don't want to say it's simple, but it, it's just high hands, and when they release it, go after it. No doubt, man. And you know what, G, with the sister's rule, secondary defense this year, man, him been seven foot tall, man, hands swallowed up, man, and with his length, man, it can't call a foul to do seven foot tall by somebody's shot, man. <laughs> Hey, it's been great. You know, we we've actually never really played a lot of drop coverage uh, or what we call weak and um, because we, we never had the rim protection. So we we're trying to keep it out of the paint. And this year, uh, as we've started to, to kind of, you know, find our groove, we've had a lot more uh, drop coverage. And that's because of Malcolm, because we feel comfortable with with him being able to contest the shot, but then also get back to his and, and box out. So been a huge difference for us uh, and has really anchored our defense and it's been f fantastic. And Malcolm, for you, man, uh, you know, a lot of people want to want to score the ball, and that's just impact. But you're the impact defensively and getting rebounds and taking up space. So for you, man, when did you get that that learn that that zeal and passion to affect the game without scoring as much, man? I think that started in high school. I averaged, I think, six points in high school, being the tallest player out there, and just seeing that I was getting a lot of attention just from rebounding and blocking shots, and so. I had the mentality that I really didn't have to score. I, you know, when those opportunities came to, to score the ball, then I needed to take advantage of them. But my that wasn't my role. We had a lot of other players on the team who were scorers, and so they that's their job. And I just had to know what my role was on the team. You kind of mentioned something very important there, Malcolm. You know, a lot of you kids, y'all guys, your age, man. Knowing their role and something their role was a hard, hard thing. So for you, man, in high school, man, kind of wait to get that basketball IQ to most of us others to be able to know this is my role. This is what helps the team be better. I mean, I don't score the ball, but I know this is what the what I do helps the team. We're very effective at it. We're going to win if I do these things. Yeah. Just being surrounded by smart people. I had a lot of good coaches, a lot of good players that I've played with, and so – they really broke it down to me where I didn't have to do the thinking. They just let me know, you know, do these things. And even here, G says the same things, like do your job, rebounding, blocking shots, defending. You know, that's all I have to do to be on the floor. We're, tr we're trying to get better at, at throwing lobs, and Malcolm is way way more uh, <clears throat> adept at catching the ball above the, above the flow instead of below it. And uh, we've got to get our guards – program to throw it up and we're trying to work on that as we go we work on it every day uh and we're getting better and better at it but it's one of those deals where it takes time and and doesn't just you don't just flip a light switch and suddenly you're throwing mobs on every every pass uh but i do think by the end of the year he'll be a rim threat uh more consistently and it'll really help our offense as well and malcolm well, who are some bees you looked up to man as you were growing up in high school man and really kind of what you wanted to kind of mold your game like man yeah, so one of the first players that I learned, liked early was Hassan Whiteside. He was just a big shot blocker, and so I, I watched him a lot. Um, and then as I learned where my game could go, I started to like Clint Capella more, uh, Rudy Gobert. And so those are players that I started to look at, and, you know, they kind of gave me the the vision for what my game could be. Clint Capella somebody I know very well, by the way. And, I, and I'll tell you some stories about him as well, what he does when I see you uh, this week, man. So, yeah, see, see somebody I know very, very well, man. So, great guy to yeah. bottle after, man. See, uh, he's not still with Atlanta, is he? Like, I know he was with him for a long time, and then he went to the Rockets. Where, where is Clint now? He's still with the Hawks. He's, he's our starting center. Still with the Hawks? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Starting center, yep, he sure is, man. And, and uh, Malcolm, man, uh, for you, brother, um, Kind of, kind of, I know, I know you're from Columbia. It's an hour from home. So is that part of the reason you chose Queens to come play, play for G-Man out to leave in Georgetown? Yeah, that was definitely a part of the decision, being here in Charlotte, um, closer to home. 
I love DC, but it was always, you know, seven, eight hour drive to get home, flight, whatever it took. Um, so I definitely get to see, you know, my family, my mom, uh, my sisters here in Charlotte, my niece. So, you know, having all of them here is a big, big reason. No doubt, G. Like I said, man, you forged you a good one, man. I'm a, a, a high major guy coming to Queens, man. You doing some things recruiting wise, buddy. Well, you know, it's it was it was good fit for Malcolm. Uh, you know, we uh, as I told Malcolm in the recruiting process, we didn't have a true five man, and uh, lots of opportunity for him to grow here. And we run a system that he'd fit well in, and and I and I think he's starting to grow into that. And been really proud of him to see to see where he's going, and and not just where he's now, but where he's going to end up here at the end of the process. And uh, I think Malcolm's going to have a long, fruitful pro career, protecting someone's rim at the professional level for for a long time. No doubt, man. And G, man, I must tell you, man, against UCA, man, uh, you had big nights from AJ and Dayton, man. And uh, you know, you sponsored to that big one and close the game out the right way. So uh yeah, I see you've been getting those guys clicking together, man, a lot with Dayton and AJ and those guys it's about what they've been doing on the court for these last four games, man. Yeah, you know, Dayton has really made a lot of progress with his ball security. So his turnovers have been way down, which has really helped our offense quite a bit, become way more efficient and uh AJ has made a huge jump because shot selection, he's actually taking a few less shots and making more of them. He's learning to read uh, the big down low and figure out when he's supposed to get all the way to the rim and when he's not. And so it's really helped AJ's. Both of their efficiency has gone up, which has really helped our team, uh, which was a big deal. And, and it's allowed us to set our defense more often because there's less live ball turnovers and quick shots. And, and those two's progress uh, mentally has been the biggest jump. And then obviously defense, we've made a big jump playing Malcolm Moore, playing a little bit bigger, uh, which has helped us rebound a little bit more effectively, but also just be more solid defensively, stay between the ball and the basket and and being able to contest shots with more length. When that has really been the the, the reason our, our season has kind of turned is is just everyone's everyone's understanding of how to shave just a little bit more efficiency offensively and then be a little bit more effective defensively. And, G, North Alabama wasn't the results you wanted, but you had three guys with double-doubles. That's that's kind of rare in today's game. And you uh, yeah. both got double-double figures, man. So I know you wish you could have came out of there with a win, but, but especially with three guys going double-doubles for you, man, putting out the effort on, on the road for you guys. You know, I thought I thought we played really well, and after the game, I wasn't upset at all. I told our guys, like, thought they played really hard. You know, I, I've never seen a box score where a team goes 13 for 19 from three. I've just never seen it. So um, kudos to them for having an epic shooting night. And if they didn't have that type of shooting night, I think we go we go away winning. Um, so I was proud of our guys, and I think they're starting to execute the game plan and understand what we're trying to do. And we just need to kind of kind of get over the hump on the road. And we've got two chances this week, you know, at, at Lipscomb and at Austin P. And, uh, you know, last year, that road trip, we were one and one and, and got one at Austin P on a buzzer beater. And hopefully we're ha- we have some success this weekend as well. And Gene, let me ask you about Malcolm, man. So he helped you with screen, right? He's on, on ball screens with his wide base, man. He gives those guys like Dayton and Bryson and AJ get downhill. But Malcolm's length and size, and it's in the straight screen. Defense can't run through him. It's be a foul. So how does he help in that area as well? We want to do the pick and roll and run off ball actions. Yeah, Malcolm has been unbelievable in ball screen coverage and his ability to stay between the ball and the basket and, and drop but he's also been really good at hedging as well. So, uh, and then even sometimes when we're in ice coverages, his ability to move his feet and contain the guard and allow the guard to get back and then get back to his uh, has been elite. Um, And so to be honest with you, our defensive numbers wouldn't be anywhere where they are if it wasn't for Malcolm. I really appreciate the fact that he's, he's been locked in and, I, I I never asked him fully like what they always were in at Georgetown, but I think it was a lot of drop. But he's been good in every coverage, whether it's ice, whether it's drop, uh, whether it's a hedge, and and then even a couple of times we've switched. Malcolm's done a great job. One hundred percent, man. And you know what, G is also bad is EKU came to to the to your home arena, man, and they were number one. You all held them down scoring wise, and you got a lot of points on them as well, man. So. Talk about that, man, for Queens being in transition to D1, man. And do you all, number one team in, in the A-Sun, who's been well, ice out all year, come to your place and you give hang a on Yeah, I thought our guys, I mean, they were so locked in. You could see the connected connected basketball. 
from defensively understanding the assignment. Malcolm, you know, really intimidating Cozart to Bryce Cash, you know, really doing an unbelievable job on Tay Tay Blanton. Uh, so I thought there was two two unbelievable defensive performances there. And then offensively, that led to us uh, really being able to get out and run. But then they press, and uh, our guys did an unbelievable job of attacking their pressure. Even where times we had our five man bringing the ball up and initiating offense so that they couldn't pressure us. And uh, I thought our guys did a phenomenal job on both sides, really executing and and understanding what we were trying to do. And uh, I was really proud of the effort. And, and I thought we we put that was our best forty minutes of the year for sure. No doubt, man. Like I say the you know, like I say you like right A W you know guys they press all the time, whether it be man zone and switching and drop back into the zone, man, and just de dealing with that, man. And you could do what you did, man. One hundred percent kudos to you guys and your team for that. And also that game too, man. AJ and Dayton went to a piece that game against EKU. You know who prides himself on trying to stop people, holding holding people down, and you know not really being in too much of a deep drop, stuff like that, man. You did a great job against them offensive as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm just proud of those dudes and, you know, been been really, really, uh, you know, forward with our guys. Hey, can't control what happened in the past. we got to continue to grow and get better 1% daily. And I think all of our guys, Malcolm, have all bought into that. And we're seeing our team turn a corner, you know, whether I don't think we're all the way there yet, but we're seeing the progress. You see a lot of teams in February, they can, they can kind of take a step back. And I think right now our team is starting to peak and take a step forward. I think this is the right time you want it to happen. You don't want to peak in December. So I think no. as, you, as you do it, what was it better, man? It's like it's definitely what you want to do. You're doing the right things. And but I, mean, I want to highlight this only five turnovers for the team, which is whirlwind thing. As you all play, only five turnovers, man. <laughs> Heck of a job to your guards and everybody offensively on against Billerman, man. And come after that, that big win to kill us all thing. Yeah, you know, and everyone says turnovers is the guards, but I, I think it's everyone. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things. Malcolm Malcolm sees the ball more here than he did at Georgetown. And so part of his progress has been his turnover rate, which has been down quite a bit the last few weeks, and his foul rate too. So, you know, that's that's the biggest thing as you get into conference play is, is taking out the three things that can beat you, turnovers, fouls, and offense rebounds. And so our team is doing a great job making progress in those areas. Our foul rate and our turnover rate are way down. If we can make a little progress in that offensive rebound rate, I think we're gonna be we're gonna be really hard to beat in March. No doubt, G. Like you said, man, and how cool is that a guy like Malcolm Size on the DHOs? We run a run Bryce off of DHO or AJ or all them guys. His size, man, gives him that runway, man. You gotta really enjoy as look like we're trying to do handoffs as well, brothers. So I feel like G man, this guy he's gonna really help you out a lot, man. And having his unique size, man, for the age son, man, is one of a kind. Yeah, well, glad he's here. I'll let Malcolm touch on that, but he set a couple of monster screams the last few games and gotten guys wide open, and we call those screen assists. So, uh, but but it's a huge part of our offense. Malcolm, you want to touch on that? Yeah, again, just thinking about how to be effective as a teammate, and so um, one thing that was pointed out to me is I can set more screens, um, especially for Chris. I think I we me and him we actually talked about it, how I can you know work to get him more shots, um, and so I think just being more aware of what to do to make myself more effective uh, really helped me out. And so just looking for those opportunities in the game to get my teammates open um, and then get myself open as well. No doubt. And, Gene, this is something you may want to think about doing with Malcolm, uh, I see in practice, man. Like, I know Capella spends 30 minutes after practice doing screens with Murray, trade all the guards, man, to get ready to be DHO, just ball screens and rolling and flashing. So maybe that's something he does. Well, I talked to you more about it as well. I see you, Malcolm, but that's something that, Success he does as well. I try to get, make sure he's in rhythm with his guards and his wing people. When they said we do all those, actually we do the Quinn like that loves to run, whether it be DHOs, ball screens, pin downs, whatever. But yeah, he definitely is active in that in that, in that part of the game for the Hawks as well. well. That's good to know. I mean, the fact that he's he's putting that kind of time and just screening, you know, getting guys open. And I, as a player, when I played, the best way I got open was actually setting great screens. You know, getting a great back screen or pin down on someone causing two guys to have to guard that other guy. And then I was able to slip or pop or get open. And so I, I'm a huge proponent of that. And, uh, I'm, Malcolm has done an unbelievable job. He's so, he's got such a great wide base on those screens. He gets guys open on, especially like special teams, like based on out of bounds, sideline out of bounds stuff. He does an unbelievable job on that. And say Von Yeko Congo too said that he's now going to 
corner shooting threes now, which I was shooting threes. <laughs> we got to <laughs> go, go to the corner now, slipping and go to the corner shooting threes now. So, you know, it's funny how I see these bigs evolve, man, do all the small things now. They're shooting threes and balls now. Jesus, how the game is going, buddy. Hey, Malcolm practices them every day. He loves it. I know I know. sometimes I'm like, hey, man, get by the basket. But there's times where you can actually see his his shot developing uh, and something we do every day. Every, every day here, every player dribble passes and shoots. And I'm happy that Malcolm is getting better at it. He's feeling more comfortable on the perimeter so that when he gets, you know, the last thing you want to do is get stuck out there and then not know what to do and look like a deer in headlights. And I can see every game Malcolm gets more and more comfortable on the perimeter passing DHOs, getting into everything faster, and it, it helps a lot practicing it. No doubt. Well, baby, look, I look forward to seeing you all this week, man. I know, like I see, G, I told you, that's G. My mom was Lipscomb, so I told my mom, Chip for Queens, because uh, G's my guy. I'll tell you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so Love it. Love it. So well, we mean, land we tomorrow, uh, we land about 10 o'clock, and we actually practice at 11 at Lipscomb. So we'll see you tomorrow uh, or Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow and Thursday, buddy. I'll be around, brother. Your brother just cheer you on, support you, G. Well, folks, this is Grant Leonard's show, episode seven here, man. G doing big things with his players. Malcolm here with his week. We'll hope see some live and color this week, man. Check us out always. Queens of Men's Basketball and QU Coach Grant. All right. Thanks, JR. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker dot com backslash bs3 network you are now tuned to bs3 network what's up good people bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.